Well, we have made it halfway through 2024. What are five movies that have already been released this year that I think are going to be Oscar contenders? Hi, it's Brian. Welcome to the Awards Contender. Happy July, everybody. It's time for my mid-year reports. I have not made an Oscar predictions video in a while because from April to like July, August, there's not a whole lot going on. I mean, let's look to last year at this time. July 1st, 2023, only one film had been released that went on to get a Best Picture nomination, Past Lives, which came out in June, and we were on the cusp of Barbenheimer. Barbie and Oppenheimer came out at the end of July, obviously, and those two movies turned out to be huge awards contenders. Oppenheimer won a bunch of prizes, including Best Director and Best Picture. But like at this point last year, not a single movie had yet been released that went on to get an acting Oscar nomination. Of the 20 people who got nominations in acting at the 96th Academy Awards, not a single movie had come out yet. Like we were talking about Air, maybe Air would get into Best Supporting Actress for Viola Davis. We were talking about Past Lives, Greta Lee getting in for Past Lives. It was something I hoped for the entire year. I thought maybe it could happen after she got Golden Globe and Critics' Choice nominations. But when she missed SAG and BAFTA, I was like, oh, I don't know. And it didn't happen. It was so disappointing. So when it's early July, you have to be realistic about expectations. I know in the last few days, we've gotten the bike riders and kinds of kindness. Many people love these movies more than I did. You could say kinds of kindness is, of course, going to be an awards contender. Like, maybe it won't get into Best Picture or something, but, like, it's gonna get director for Lanthimos. Emma Stone just won for Poor Things, so she'll probably be nominated again. Jesse Plemons won Best Actor for Kinds of Kindness at Cannes. So, obviously, he's going to get an Oscar nomination for Best Actor, and it's like... Yeah, but the year is only halfway over. There's a lot of movies to get to in September, October, November, December that are going to be the Giants contenders. That's the case every year, and it's definitely going to be the case this year. As I just talked about in my review, I am very doubtful of the chances for Kinds of Kindness next award season. I could see it getting pretty much nothing. Like maybe it shows up somewhere at Critics Choice maybe. And I said in that review, it could get a screenplay nomination at the Oscars. If that category is wide open, original screenplay, like maybe, but I don't think so. Same thing goes with the bike riders, which I saw way back at the Telluride Film Festival last September. It was one of the lesser movies I saw at the festival. I had some problems with it, but I really loved that Jodie Comer performance. I thought she could get into supporting actress, but then they pushed the movie from December, I think. I think it was coming out in December from a different studio, and they pushed it to June. It had a pretty good opening weekend, but again, it's just it's too early. I don't think the bike riders is going to do well either next award season. So I am predicting right now that both Kinds of Kindness and the Bike Riders are going to get zero Oscar nominations. That's my prediction. We'll see what happens. But what are five films I do think are going to get into the Oscars next year that have come out so far this year? Let's be honest now. There's really only one movie. One film released between January and June of 2024 that's going to be a major Oscar contender, get into Best Picture, lots of technical categories, and that is Dune Part 2. This sequel was better, richer than the original. Pretty much everybody loved it. It was a huge blockbuster hit, and it would just be mind-boggling, like mind-boggling if we get to early 2025 and Dune Part 2 only gets a handful of tech nominations and nothing else. Like, no matter what happens between now and the end of the year, Dune Part 2 is going to do well next award season. The question is, how well? Like, can it get into Best Director for Denis Villeneuve? Can it get into an acting category? Will it get into screenplay? 
I'm not so sure about that. Remember, this movie opened on March 1st. It's already been three months since the movie came out, and we have a lot of movies to get through over the next six months and beyond. And so the only thing that makes me hesitate into predicting like 12, 13 Oscar nominations for Dune Part 2 is the early release dates. Now, Dune Part 2, of course, was supposed to come out last November. We'll never know if the film had stuck to that original release date what the previous award season would have looked like. But right now, at this point in 2024, it's been kind of a rough go for awards contender movies. Like, think about 2022. At this point, Everything Everywhere All at Once and Top Gun Maverick and Elvis had come out. Those movies did very well at the Oscars, got lots of nominations, lots of big wins. 2024 does not look like that season at all, and I do think that is going to help Dune Part 2. Since Denis Villeneuve missed director for the first Dune, and he's only been nominated the one time for Arrival, which is crazy to me, I think because Dune Part 2 did come out so early in the year, Villeneuve will probably miss in director again, that's the feeling I have right now. I also don't think it gets into an acting category. Like I thought about Austin Butler, he is having a moment right now and he gives a delicious villainous performance in Dune Part 2. I could see that happening if there was room in the category, but again, it's so early in the year, I would say that's very doubtful. I think Dune Part 2 will get into Best Picture, probably adapted screenplay, and then at least five, six, maybe seven tech categories, I do think Dune Part 2 is going to win in a lot of those technical categories the way that the first Dune did. Remember, Dune Part 1 from 2021 got six Academy Awards. It won six. So, especially because Dune Part 2 is a better movie... I would be shocked if Dune Part 2 goes home with just visual effects and sound and that's it. Like, it's going to do well. I know it's a long year and it came out way back in March, but be patient. Dune Part 2 is going to be a major factor next award season. So that's the only sure thing, I would say. The only film I know is going to do well at the Golden Globes and Critics' Choice and probably BAFTA before the Oscars. I don't know about SAG, like maybe it gets into SAG Ensemble, but probably not. The second movie to talk about is my favorite film so far this year. It's my one five-star film of 2024, still thus far, and some people have said in comments on my video review and things, like that's not going to be an Oscar movie. Like sit down and shut up, Challengers. Challengers is not going to do well next award season, and I want to push back against that a little bit because I just think it's such a great film. It was such a thrill to watch every moment of that movie. I would be shocked if Challengers just comes up with nothing next award season. Now, is it going to get into Best Picture, Best Director, any of the acting categories? Probably not. Like, that would be amazing. I would love that. I would vote for it to get into those categories. I think Zendaya deserves a Best Actress nomination. Luca Guadagnino would be a great pick for Best Director. But there is one thing holding Guadagnino back here, I think, in that I guess he has another movie coming out later this year with Daniel Craig called Queer. I believe it's having its world premiere at the Venice Film Festival. And so Queer is going to be the big awards player for Luca Guadagnino at the end of 2024, which does give me some pause about challengers, like maybe enough voters will forget about it. And that would just be devastating because at the very least, challengers deserves to get a couple tech nominations like Best Editing and Best Original Score. Like at the very, 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 very least, it deserves editing and score. Give me those two and I will be okay. <laughs> like I will, I will be quiet, I will smile and not throw a fit 
even though I do think Challengers should be a Best Picture nominee, this movie is so great, and like Dune Part 2 was originally coming out in 2023, and then they pushed it to April, Again, I don't know if Challengers would have been a major awards contender a few months ago because of its April release date. It is going to be hard to gather that momentum it needs throughout the next few months to keep it on awards voters' minds. But I feel like a lot of people were doubting Past Lives at this point last year. Past Lives comes out in June. It's not a big hit by any means. It was out of theaters by, what, end of July, August. And so there was some doubts with that film, like, oh, that's too small, it's too early in the year. But then it ended up doing very well at the Golden Globes and Critics' Choice. It got two big Oscar nominations. If there's enough passion for challengers, I could see it getting in. And I'm going to be shouting from the rooftops, like, don't forget challengers. It deserves to be an Oscar nominee. And I think it's going to be. Number three is Inside Out 2, which is the first mega blockbuster of the summer. Like, a lot of people were waiting in May and early June for something to take off, right? And be like a big hit at the box office, get people back in the theaters. Inside Out 2 was that movie, and I enjoyed it. I liked it more in the first half than I did in the second. I had kind of a weird reaction to Inside Out 2 in that for a while... I was like, why are people being negative about this? This is a fantastic sequel. I'm really enjoying it. And then it hit a point about 45, 50 minutes in where I was like, oh, I kind of see where this is going. It's not giving me any surprises. It slowed down in the pacing. And the ending, I thought, was a little bit rushed. And I was like, oh, okay, it's good. It's not great. It's not the original Inside Out, which I think is a flat-out masterpiece one of Pixar's greatest movies. It's not at that level, but a lot of people really love it. Like, really love it, or going back a second, a third time. It's such a huge, monstrous hit at the box office. It's for sure getting an Oscar nomination for Best Animated Feature could potentially win. Inside Out, of course, won this Oscar back in 2016. And it's been a few years since Pixar has won an Oscar in that category, unless something comes out of the blue later this year, like a Boy in the Heron kind of a movie that everybody falls for. I think Inside Out 2 is going to be the frontrunner to win Best Animated Feature at the next Academy Awards ceremony. Like Disney has Moana 2 in November. I don't think Moana 2 is going to overtake Inside Out 2 during award season. Remember the Academy Academy gave Toy Story 4 Best Animated Feature. Toy Story 4. So Inside Out 2 could also win there. Number 4 is Furiosa from George Miller. Is Furiosa going to get into the Oscars? It has to, right? I know it didn't do as well as they hoped, and it's not as good as Mad Max Fury Road, but in the technical categories, Furiosa is going to show up somewhere. I would assume at least two or three categories, if not more. It's not going to get into the top categories, obviously, but I think when it comes to visual effects and sound and makeup and hairstyling and those kinds of categories, it doesn't really matter if your movie underperformed. Enough people really liked and loved Furiosa. There's a lot of great craft on display that I'm pretty certain it's going to get into the Oscars somewhere. Like, even if it's just one category, maybe it's just one. Like, that would be really devastating and silly if Furiosa got nothing. It's going to be nominated for something at the Oscars. And number five is Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. You ready for a prediction? This movie is going to be nominated for Best Visual Effects. How do I know this? Why am I pretty confident about this? If you go back and look at the last three Planet of the Apes movies, Rise, Dawn, and War all got an Oscar nomination for visual effects. I did think Kingdom was a slight step down from that trilogy, but it was still pretty good. And the special effects of those apes are mind-boggling. Like, just so well done. You forget you're looking at VFX throughout a lot of that movie. 
And so even though the movie isn't quite as good as the last three, I think in the visual effects category, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is getting in. So those are the main five films that have been released so far this year. I do think we'll get at least one Oscar nomination. Obviously, Dune Part 2 will get multiple, probably 10 or more. Challengers, I hope, gets something, even if it's just editing. Like a one-off nomination in the tech categories would fill me with joy. Please let it happen. Inside Out 2 is definitely getting into animated feature. Furiosa is probably getting into visual effects, sound, makeup and hairstyling, maybe costume design. And Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is getting into visual effects. Is there anything else to talk about that could be a contender? Not really. Again, I don't see anything happening for the bike riders or kinds of kindness. I loved Civil War, directed by Alex Garland, starring Kirsten Dunst. That's going to be on my top 10 of the year. But Alex Garland films have not done well at the Oscars since Ex Machina. And because of the early release dates and the divisive opinions about that movie, Civil War is not going to play a role next award season. If there was a stunts category, the Fall Guy would probably get in there. But there isn't a stunts category, yet. And there has been the Cannes Film Festival, of course. Enora won the Palme d'Or, Sean Baker's new movie. That's probably going to play a role next award season. It's not opening until October, I think. And probably at least two or three or maybe more other films that played at Cannes are going to go on to be Oscar nominees. But none of those films have come out yet, and so it's hard to judge right now like what those Oscar contenders might be outside of Enora. Ultimately, it's still very early. Award season doesn't really kick into high gear until Venice and Telluride and Toronto, which is about two months away. Like just hold off for about two more months. I'll be back in August with my very early Oscar predictions video where I really do a deep dive into all the big potential awards contenders coming out at the end of the year. Right now, we just enjoy the summer, enjoy the hot weather, and we wait. We wait for the fall festivals, which will be here sooner than you think. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and let me know in the comments below what are some films that have already been released in 2024 that you think are going to be Oscar contenders. Is there anything I left off the list? We'll see you next time at the Awards Contender.